My name is Dr. Mrinal Patnaik. I'm a consultant with the Division of Hematology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Uh, my specialty is in myeloid malignancies, and I have a special interest in chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about an upcoming article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings titled Chronic Myelomonocytic Leukemia, a Focus on Clinical Practice. CMML, or chronic myelomonocytic leukemia, is a cancer of the blood and the bone marrow. Uh, it is seen in about four out of every 100,000 people per year, and typically occurs in the seventh decade of life. It fits into a category of diseases that share overlapping features of myelodysplastic syndromes and myeloproliferative neoplasms. And patients are often symptomatic because they have fevers, weight loss, enlarged livers and spleens. Their blood counts either go high or low and they often uh, have trouble requiring blood and platelet transfusions. Uh, we do have a well-established clinic at uh, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester where a lot of patients are referred. Hence we thought this was a very apt uh, time to write our consensus recommendations on how we diagnose the disease, what are the diagnostic pitfalls, what are the advances in genetics, especially molecular genetics uh, in CMML, and more importantly, what are the algorithms that we follow here in uh, managing these patients? How do we treat their issues, and when do we do allogeneic stem cell transplants? Uh, a lot of progress has been made in the diagnostic approach to CMML, and the readers will find the section on diagnostic pitfalls uh, very interesting because this goes through a day-to-day -day, uh, li real-life scenario of uh, what we encounter in practice. Uh, we've also summarized all the advances in molecular genetics, uh, mutations in genes like TET2, ASXL1, and SRSF2 are very prevalent in CMML. Of these, ASXL1 are predictive of uh, shortened overall survival. And in fact, we have developed the molecular Mayo model, uh, which is a contemporary prognostic model to help prognosticate patients with CMML. And we describe how that model came to be, what are the advantages, and how to apply that in clinical practice. Uh, we then go on to talk about therapeutics. Uh, and this includes uh, contemporary available treatment strategies, drugs like 5-Azacytidine and Decidabine. Uh, but we also talk about all the upcoming future clinical trials, uh, drugs that are in developmental phases, and what the community in general can uh, eagerly anticipate or expect uh, in the upcoming months. And then we finish off with uh, the role of allogenic stem cell transplant. It really is the only curative option right now for patients with CMML, but it is fraught with complications like graft-versus-host disease and the risk of dying uh, from conditions or complications related to the uh, transplant itself. And we uh, elaborate a little bit on our Mayo Clinic risk-adapted algorithm of how we stratify and select patients who would benefit from transplant and what are some of the strategies we employ. So in summary, uh, this is a very comprehensive review on a relatively rare disease that causes a lot of uh, symptoms in patients afflicted by it. Uh, it really encompasses the entire breadth from diagnostics uh, to molecular advances uh, to therapeutics. Uh, there are some nice tables and flow sheets that will help the readers uh, utilize this well in their clinical practice. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.